The film opens by showing a group of fully equipped personnel spraying liquid on a golf course. They believe that the liquid can quickly melt snow so that the wealthy can pursue their hobbies at all times. The scene shifts to a young boy named Andre, who has just returned from school. He rides his bike while watching videos on his phone. Meanwhile, a patrol officer named Dan is on duty, listening to a radio broadcast by a presenter named Patrick. Patrick expresses disappointment with the golf course management in the area, as they seem to be defying nature to satisfy the desires of the wealthy, leading to an ecological imbalance on Peacock Island. Surprisingly, Andre rides across right in front of Dan's patrol car, prompting Dan to scold Andre to be more careful. Upon arriving home, Andre goes straight to the kitchen to grab a can of soda and a pack of snacks. At home, only Andre's younger sister Annie is there, being taken care of by a babysitter named Camilla. Camilla informs him that their mother hasn't returned yet, but Andre doesn't pay much attention and chooses to relax in his room while playing with his phone. Dan, who has just arrived at the office, quickly calls his daughter named Patricia, who works as a caddy. He intends to pick up Patricia, but he can't because there's still work to be done. Finally, Dan decides to go home to his house outside the island. Meanwhile, Camilla, who has finished her duties, is getting ready to leave. Since their mother hasn't returned yet, Andre is asked to take care of the sleeping Annie. Shortly after, Annie wakes up and starts crying. Andre tries various ways to calm her down, but none of them work. Fortunately, their mother, Jose, arrives home. Switching back to Dan, he's practicing lighting a fire using traditional methods, but his efforts keep failing. He comes up with the idea of using gunpowder, which results in a small explosion. Before heading to work, Jose doesn't forget to make vegetable juice. She asks Andre to take care of Annie while waiting for Camilla to arrive. Andre, engrossed in playing with his phone, doesn't realize that his sister is playing near the TV. Luckily, Andre manages to catch the TV before it falls on Annie. Andre's responsibilities as an older brother are becoming more evident. He tries to change his younger sister's diaper by following a tutorial on his phone. Meanwhile, Dan, who has just finished dropping off Patricia, notices a snow-free area on the golf course, which raises some questions for him. On one side, a wealthy couple, Marcel and Maude, arrives to play golf. They are warmly welcomed by the attendant named Michelle. Elsewhere, a wealthy man named Jack is getting ready. He asks for a glass of water to rinse his mouth and even takes a sip of it. Afterward, Jack goes grocery shopping and suddenly feels a slight dizziness. But his condition quickly returns to normal. When he arrives home and intends to join his wife Amanda, who is taking a bath, an unexpected event bewilders Jack. His teeth turn green, and he transforms into a zombie, attacking Amanda. Back on the golf course, the wealthy individuals are enjoying their hobby, assisted by Patricia as their caddy. After they finish playing, they return to a puzzling scene at the building area, which is eerily quiet. Suddenly, a man rushes out of the building, urging everyone to save themselves. Several zombies are seen chasing him. Their dog, now turned into a zombie, attacks Marcel's wife. Marcel and Michelle are forced to retreat into the building to escape a horde of zombies trying to attack them. Unfortunately, their dog manages to enter and bites Marcel's leg. Michelle is startled to see Marcel turning into a zombie, prompting him to find a hiding spot. Switching back to Dan, he receives a report from a woman about her neighbor's strange behavior. Dan takes the initiative to investigate immediately. The woman goes back to enjoying her warm drink. Dan observes the erratic behavior of the house's occupants. Before he can take any action, the woman turns into a zombie and attacks Dan. However, he manages to secure himself inside his car. He attempts to contact other officers for help, but there's no response. Seeing more zombies approaching, Dan becomes concerned for his daughter's safety. He leaves a message for Patricia, who is currently trying to fend off zombie attacks and save herself. Meanwhile, Andre feels relieved knowing his mother has returned. Jose asks Andre to prepare a bottle of milk for Annie. As Andre is about to fill the bottle with water, his mother stops him and instructs him to use the water from the fridge. Andre suggests that his mother should rest more instead of constantly drinking vegetable juice or taking antidepressants that he believes have no real effect on her condition. However, his mother doesn't pay attention to Andre's advice. Shortly after, Jose begins to feel dizzy. During the night, as Andre gets a drink, he sees his mother lying on the couch. 
He assumes she's just tired. Suddenly, Jose wakes up and remains silent. When Andre opens his soda can, Jose instantly becomes alert and tries to attack him. Meanwhile, Dan, busy contacting Patricia, accidentally collides with Jose. Though Jose is still alive, she can no longer stand. Dan warns Andre not to approach his mother and instructs him to go back home and lock all the doors. Dan quickly leaves them behind. Simultaneously, more zombies start to appear. Andre believes his mother can still be saved and tries to drag her inside the house. And they are advised to stay home. Realizing that Jose is about to attack Annie, Andre immediately drags his mother back and locks her in the bathroom. Hearing the cries of a baby and knowing that their house is now surrounded by zombies, Andre tries to muffle Annie's cries by covering her with a pillow and a doll. This successfully distracts the zombies. Meanwhile, Patricia, trapped in the golf cart garage, manages to contact her father. Dan instructs Patricia to stay hidden until he arrives to pick her up. When Dan arrives at the location, he is attacked by a group of zombies that are present there. At the border, the police have closed the bridge connecting Peacock Island to the city. Andre, monitoring the situation outside, is startled by the appearance of a zombie attempting to catch him. He narrowly escapes as the zombie gets stuck. Back at the border, the police are starting to leave the area, and the military is taking action by destroying the bridge, which is now filled with zombies. This leads to a power outage in the city. In the absence of a mother, Andre has to step up as a responsible older brother. As Andre prepares to feed his mother her favorite vegetables, Annie inadvertently crawls closer to Jose. Seeing Jose trying to attack Annie, Andre lures Jose away. When Jose reaches the front of the TV table, she accidentally bumps into the table leg, causing the TV to fall on her head. Andre moves his mother's body back to the bathroom. Afterward, he plans to escape from the house along with Annie. He uses his pet cat as bait for the zombies so that he can get away. However, even though they manage to escape, it doesn't guarantee safety from the pursuing zombies. They get cornered in the supermarket, but luckily, Dan arrives to secure them. Andre is desperate for milk for Annie, but Dan reassures him that they don't need to worry because there's plenty of food available. Andre leaves Annie briefly while he searches for milk. Unsupervised, Annie crawls around the room. Andre is startled when a zombie suddenly appears behind the glass door. Dan informs him that the zombie is Patricia and intentionally keeps her confined, believing that Patricia can still be saved. Dan continues his attempts to start a fire using traditional methods and eventually succeeds after practicing for a while. While enjoying their meal and listening to the radio broadcast for information, Patrick explains that the outbreak is caused by a type of virus, but the exact transmission process is still unknown. Patrick connects over the phone with a minister of security named Daniel, informing him that their team is still in the investigation phase of the outbreak before deciding on further actions. A little while later, Andre, who had eaten too much ice cream, suddenly feels a headache. Dan is on high alert, suspecting that Andre might be turning into a zombie. Realizing that they can't stay in this place indefinitely, Dan contacts Patrick, explaining that he and two uninfected children are on the island and pleading for assistance. However, Patrick asks Dan how he knows they're uninfected. Frustrated, Dan reveals that his daughter is now confined and her physical condition has turned green but Patrick demands further clarification about what is really happening on the island. Dan asserts that he has no idea about the cause of all this. With no certainty about their fate, Dan hangs up the phone. Realizing that they won't receive help from the government, Dan and the kids are forced to survive amidst the dangerous virus outbreak. Dan starts thinking that people might be infected through the water, as water is essential for all living creatures. Water could also serve as a medium that causes simultaneous infection. Andre agrees with Dan's theory, mentioning that he has never drunk tap water before. Dan begins to suspect that the outbreak might be caused by a group of terrorists contaminating the island's water supply. Finally, they decide to cautiously leave their hiding spot. Unfortunately, Patricia, who is being escorted by Dan, rebels and distracts one of the zombies attempting to attack her. Seeing that the zombie is just a child, Dan refrains from killing it and quickly leaves the area. We're shown two women in full gear carrying suitcases. They head towards the golf course building, eliminating the zombies in their path. Inside the building, 
Michelle has burned all the documents and contracts related to their collaboration. He also asks the two women to destroy the remaining fertilizer and replace it with real grass. Unexpectedly, the women have smoke bombs in their suitcases and insert green pills into Michelle's mouth. Back to Dan and Andre, who are heading towards the water treatment plant. They're forced to leave Annie in the car to prevent her crying from attracting attention. Inside the plant, Patricia realizes there's another group of zombies coming from a different direction. She runs to investigate and enters a wastewater tank, followed by Dan attempting to enter as well. In his attempt to save Patricia, Dan is surprised by the appearance of a zombie. However, the zombie doesn't attack Dan after he shields himself with Patricia's body. Accidentally speaking out loud, Andre attracts the attention of a zombie, which chases him until he returns to the car. Dan, attempting to pull Patricia out of the pool, inadvertently causes her hand to be severed due to her weakening condition. Shortly after, Dan manages to exit the pool, carrying Patricia and her detached hand. Once again, he uses Patricia as a shield to protect himself from the zombie attack. Dan explains to Andre that Patricia's hand is as fragile as a branch that can easily break. Andre notices that Patricia's severed hand is sprouting grass. Hearing Andre's observation, Dan realizes that this outbreak isn't a terrorist attack, but rather the result of golf enthusiasts forcing grass to grow on the course during the snowy season. Meanwhile, the two women are dropping smoke bombs on the golf course. Not long after, Dan and Andre arrive at the golf course building, only to find all entrances locked. Dan instructs Andre to look after Patricia while he climbs onto the roof to enter the building. Once they're all inside, they plan to explore the building to find what's causing the grass to grow during winter. Before investigating, Dan decides to confine Patricia in a room while Andre secures Annie with a stack of chairs. They both come across a dog that's still breathing, but its body is covered in grass. Dan begins to show symptoms that he's getting infected. Hearing Annie crying, Andre is asked to watch over her while Dan continues the search alone. Upon Andre's return, Annie is missing. It turns out the barricade Andre set up created a small gap for Annie to crawl out. Dan discovers several large tubes with attached explosives. Suddenly he experiences a debilitating headache that leaves him helpless. At the same time, the detonator on the bomb becomes active. Using a piece of Patricia's hand, Dan desperately tries to deactivate the detonator. The two women, realizing that the detonator has stopped, move into the building and find Annie in the kitchen. One of the women heartlessly gives Annie the green pill before they leave her. Not long after, Andre finds Annie and immediately picks her up. He encounters the two women again, and they capture him, forcing him to swallow the green pill. Annie, now a zombie, bites one of the women's fingers. Meanwhile, Dan, who has also turned into a zombie, attacks the other woman. In the chaotic situation, Andre accidentally steps on a smoke bomb, inhaling its smoke along with Annie. Andre manages to escape from the pursuing Dan, and luckily, Dan doesn't attack Andre because he's carrying the infected Annie. Andre takes Dan's phone and contacts Patricia's phone. Using Patricia's phone, Andre records and shares the current situation. He describes how the infected individual's bodies are consumed by grass and informs them about Annie's condition. If no action is taken, Annie will suffer the same fate as the grass-covered dog. Meanwhile, the two infected women confront each other, resulting in both of them dying. Through his radio broadcast, Patrick urges the Minister of Security to take immediate action to prevent the outbreak from spreading to other cities. Consequently, they send military forces to secure Peacock Island. Upon realizing that help has arrived, Andre attempts to approach the military personnel on duty, but their actions are not as he expected. They eliminate both zombies and uninfected individuals. Shortly afterward, Annie, who is infected, returns to normal. Not wanting to be eradicated, Andre flees to save himself. Similarly, Dan returns to normal, but the military members who find him show no mercy, leading to their elimination, even though Dan tries to reason with them. It's possible that Dan returned to normal after inhaling the smoke from the smoke bomb that Andre stepped on. Andre walks towards the riverbank and sees several volunteers, including Camilla, using boats. Meanwhile, Patrick, who is in his office, watches a government statement on the broadcast, claiming that they've successfully dealt with the outbreak and there are no more viruses that can infect others. As Andre travels with Camilla, he throws Patricia's severed hand into the water. A fish eats the hand, 
causing the fish to turn into a zombie, and the movie ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Because by subscribing, you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video. Two.